So today I think I'll work on and play some Brix's Death Shadow with Ledger Shredder. I don't have a deck list yet, but I think I'm just going to build it from the ground up right now. Just with some thoughts I've had about the format and also intuitively what I think the deck should look like. Um, I think Ledger Shredder makes a lot of sense in the deck. Of course, it's kind of an issue, like, you have to ask yourself how many um, creatures you actually want to play, how many spells you want to play. There's like a delicate balance, I think. And another question is, do you actually want to play any basic lands? I'm not sure about that yet, but we'll try to fill in some of the details as we go along here. Um, I think probably Basic Swamp makes sense, and the question is, do we, do we want the other one? The Basic, um, Mountain. Yeah, so that's what's been rolling through my mind. The other question is, how many lands do you want to play? Um, I think 18 is where I'm probably going to be at between baubles and having a really low curve. Of course, you maybe should play 19. I'm no longer pro 20 without Lurus involved in the mix. But... Well, I'm, I'm definitely going to play uh, to, um, whatchamacallit. What, what's the card I'm thinking of? Uh, Kroxa. Sorry. I don't know why my brain was fried for a second. No, I, I don't think I'm going to main deck the, um... The, um... Ah. What's wrong with me today? I'm not going to main deck dress down anymore, rather, is what I meant to say. Wow. Legislature just keeps going up and up. It's kind of insane. Uh, no basic island, yeah. Which might be a mistake. It also means I'm skewed towards not wanting a card like Murktide Regent. I think basically you have to pick if you want to play Kroxa or Murktide Regent. You can't really play both. Because I think if you play both, you'll just end up with a very awkward deck. Um, I guess I'll play the 7th Shock Land instead of the 11th Fetch. You sold out like 20? Ah, that's, uh, that's some feel bads right there. I'm not gonna lie. 4 iteration. I think Unholy Heat makes sense. Oh, uh, let's see, what? What else am I missing? I'm not- I don't love it Drown in the Lock as much as other people. I'm gonna play one Terminate and like two Drown in the Lock, I think. But I kind of think Drown in the Lock is not even a Sacred Cow in these decks, like other people do. But I think it's good to have a small number of them. The problem with Drown in the Lock is that it's not very good versus- there's like a lot of decks where it's just like honestly not very good. Um, I'm trying to remember what else I used to play in this deck. I feel like it hasn't been played for a while. I actually like Drown in the Lock less in a lot of postboard games when people just like like to side in Graveyard Hate versus you. Um, Brando. Like, the problem, the problem with Drown in the Lock is that it actually gets a lot worse in a lot of post-board configurations, depending on who you're playing against or what they're trying to accomplish. Is the Graveyard Hate one-sided? Well, no, it's just like something like Relic of Progenist or even like Unlicensed Hearse is kind of not great for you. But it's definitely, definitely Relic is... Relic or Rip are the primary ones I don't love to play against. 
I think, more than anything else. Uh, I think I want more one-mana spells. I think I'm going to play one Fatal Push and one Lightning Bolt, like I did before. And that's mostly just because you do want a lot of one-mana spells in this type of deck, in my opinion. It's also possible I just want... Um, it's possible I just want another one mana spell in this slot as well. The thing of his head trick counter spells, which is why I liked it, were matchup. Yes, I mean, the problem is Drown the Lock wasn't even good that versus like big mana decks because. It's actually hard to drown and lock their expensive thing. Like, versus Tron, it wasn't that good. And there were just a lot of matches where it just wasn't that good, you know? I'm gonna look at Soul Strong's last list. I think he posted it somewhere. it he's been really struggling it looks like yeah that's why i only want to play two drown for endo all right i think i'll play two bolt one push Not a real scientific reason for that, but, you know, we'll do it. Like Spell Pierce, like Mystical Dispute. I think I'll still play one Turok, even though I'm not even sure it's that necessary anymore. What's the correct Turok? Is this the correct Turok? I guess they're all, like, technically correct Turoks. Should I play Gigantha chat? I don't like dismember. You're out you're actually pretty good at losing life as necessary. And you only have four death shadow. And there are matchups where you don't actually want to lose life that aggressively, so. Gigantha, I guess. I'm not thrilled about it, but it's it's kind of low cost to companion it. Which is kind of sad, I guess. Because I don't think the card's amazing. Like, Loris is definitely amazing when it was legal. Um... I think I'm going to play a single and license first. I'm re pretty high on this card, especially the first copy. I think it's pretty good. wonder if I should play like something like Disdainful Stroke in my sideboard for big spell decks. Also, kind of wonder if I should sideboard a team or battle rage or not, just as like a hate card versus one year decks. I'm probably not going to, but it was a thought. Um, no, because 
I want Dress Down versus like a deck like Hammer, and I don't want Teamer Battle Rage there. But I want Teamer Battle Rage versus like Tron. So I think I'll sideboard exactly one Teamer Battle Rage. Which is kind of a weird way to go about it. And I think I wanted a second Terminate in my sideboard. I, I've always hated Engineered Explosives in these decks. Um, in my mind, the real reason to play Engineered Explosives is a card like uh, Core Sanctifier or Rhinos. I don't really like it most other places. Even though it's like, it's kind of a... I think we've almost sideboarded in way too much. It's just a really, really clunky card is the real issue. Like, paying three mana to kill one drop is really, really, really bad, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, paying two mana to kill two rhinos is pretty good, but besides that, I don't, I don't really love the card. I'm just looking at deck lists, and it's kind of weird, because I kind of feel like... Um... Kind of just looks like people have really old deck lists that haven't been really updated for a while. Also, I wonder if it's possible I only want to play one Kroxa. It kind of feels free to play two. But the reason I was thinking about just one Kroxa is I kind of want to add one land. But maybe that's crazy. Thing about Damping Sphere, I might not play it because it's also kind of awkward when my deck is so low to the ground as well. Maybe I'll just play two Alpine Moon and sandbag them for... Hmm, I don't know. Um, should I play Mystical Dispute or Fluster Storm actually? I kind of like Mystical Dispute, but it's also not very good versus Cascade. Any good ideas? Also, is Colgan's command actually good versus anyone? Oh, this is interesting. Uh, Oliver Hart was playing Unmored Ego like a week ago. I wonder if that's a better anti-tron card than Team or Battle Rage, actually. I mean, I do think Unmored Ego is kind of a bad card, but... I think I might just have too many uh, creatures in my deck. Claim to fame? Sounds bad.
All right. I think the last card will just be a call against command and I'll call it reasonable. Actually, let me take a look. Hmm. Deep analysis is not even modern legal. Also, it doesn't seem particularly good, even if it were modern legal. I really want to add a land. Mm -hmm. I don't think Deep Analysis is good in Legacy. That's why all of the uh, Doomsday decks cut the card. So... Alright, actually, I think I'm not going to play any Lightning Bolts, and I just realized why. Lightning Bolt is kind of awkward versus opposing Shredders. I'm just going to play a bunch of Fatal Pushes. Of course, this weakens me in some matchups where Fatal Push is completely dead, but Bolt's not really that good either in a lot of those matchups, so... Um, I guess you'd make a case for 2 push 1 Bolt, but I just thought about it for a second, and... If you just let them have the Shredder, it's kind of a problem. Alright, I'm going to try something like this. Obviously, this might not be where I actually want to end up, but I think it's a reasonable starting point. Again, thanks everyone being here on the stream on this Wednesday. This is not my normal day anymore because I usually have to go to my office on Wednesdays, but um, they're like replacing a workstation. So here we are today. Uh, if you want to support the stream and you're new here, hit that follow button, that's free to do. If you really want to support the stream, check for that Twitch Prime sub. Use it every month somewhere, if not here. And uh, thanks for being here. Let's get the deck list on Cardboard Live. I really wonder if I'm going to regret these, um, Drawn in the Lock. I really don't like the card as much as other people do, but, you know, it's kind of hard to, like, completely cut the card, I think. Uh, can someone tell me if the deck was updated? Cool. 
Whoa, you got your extended art shredders in the mail. They're triple what they were worth before. It's kind of sick. You think about it. All right, prediction up for the first match as well. If you want to gamble some channel points. Mom has paid off. Indeed it has. Indeed it has. All right, do we have everything? Looks like it. All right. Head into the queue. Also, I want a Torpor Orb as well, but I didn't put it in. Torpor Orb would mostly be for, like, elementals. Or the like. Not a lot of gamblers here today, huh? Uh, Void Mirror for Cascade. Uh, you could do that. I think I would rather play Chalice most of the time. It's not unreasonable, but... I think also I'd rather play Flusterstorm before, before Void Mirror as well. But no, those are not... It's not an unreasonable card to play. It's just like, kind of... It costs a lot of mana, and... A lot of those Cascade decks play Boseju and Ottawara now, so... It's not the it's not as reliable as it used to be. Kampa versus Kahira. All right, hands pretty good. Uh, the question is if I want to hold the bobble for turn two for Shredder. I think I do. I think my turn one is actually going to be Fetch, Shock, and Inquisition them. Alright, never mind. Okay, I was really scared that they would play Brennan sick for a second, but I think it was worth the risk. Kind of interesting that they didn't just tap the Triome to play it on the Temple Garden. Let's get to connive and chat. I need another shredder. Probably not. I'm just gonna bobble them now. On that. Probably like the four color Alan Wu deck, which is like four color but 60 cards and it plays Kahira. Could it be also literal elementals, I suppose, but that's fine. Just gonna Inquisition. I think I actually am gonna keep that. Counterspell dress down to Fairy 3. To Fairy 4. I think I'm meant to take Counterspell actually. I'm supposed to take Counterspell, um, yeah, because that's like really the only card in their hand that does anything. I mean, yeah, they can play, the, if they draw a land, they can Fairy and bounce that, but I don't think that even really matters that much. Looks like Naya Ramona Swaz to you. Yeah, it does, I suppose.
Guess Gigantha might matter this game, chat. Every time I think Gigantha is not going to matter, it sort of ends up doing so. It's kind of funny. their hand. Adawara. Alright. I guess I attack and put Gigantha in my hand. There goes a DRC. Question is, should I burn a Unholy Heat? Probably not, because I know they have a lot of gas in their hand. What's up, Ved? How you, how you doing? Alright, we're up in game one. Round one, game one. Alright. Um, I don't really like Fatal Push versus these decks. Like Turok... Like Spell Pierce, like Mystical Dispute, and Terminate's also kind of shit. Um, you're chilling, starving, it's super hot here. That sucks. I want to cut one on Holy Heat, but I also think that's kind of insane to do so. I could cut the 19th creature as well. Maybe that makes more sense. Holy Heat, even though I think that's probably not correct. Um, I think this is like Reluctant Keep. I mean, with two Bobbles, I think it's hard to mulligan. The Pierce is also pretty good. Top cards dispute. Just gonna cycle all my baubles now. They know that they have dispute. I 
I know they have a second solitude. Cool. Wait, they're drawing a second solitude, that's right. Um, I think Iteration's the most problematic card for me, just because it's a two for one, even though they can't cast it. Okay, I kind of regret not shocking on that one, but I do know that they have, uh, I thought maybe my life total might matter, but it, really that was loose not to shock that other one. That was, that was like really bad, I think, actually. Okay, this works out well for me. I get to trade all my cards off and play Iteration. They're gonna dispute my Spell Pierce, obviously. And they have two Solitudes that I know about. Okay, that's fine. Solitude pitching solitude on that, absolutely fine with me. I don't really care about that too much. I good. Do not have Delirium yet, because ironically I have no fetch land. Maybe I should iteration again looking for a fetch, actually. It's probably just kind of nuts. Like, if they just play Teferi, that's fine. I can probably heat it next turn. Okay, here in hand, that's fine. That's really good, actually. I think I can just play Truck Kicked with Dispute back up. Alright, so their last card is Teferi. So I feel pretty far ahead. Now they're just, they're just destroyed. Treader, um, not so high on that. Like, I don't think that's the axis you need to be on. I think games are more grindy, not linear, if that makes sense. The more linear the format is, the more appealing that sounds to me. All right, uh, a quick match win. You love to see it, I suppose. We'll go to the second match in a second. I'll let people bet a little bit. Uh, another prediction's up. Traverse the Uvenwald. Ugh. God, fine, girl, don't do that to yourself. I think Traverse has aged terribly. Basically, I think um, 
paying a mana to tutor your shit up when you can just play iterations and just loot with like Shredder, it's just kind of washed, is how I would put it. Just kind of sad, I guess, but it is what it is. Alright, going to the second match. Get your bets in if you want to. Alright, playing against Karavak. I don't know why this username sounds familiar, but... Alright, I guess just hope they're a creature deck. Having the Shredder 2 makes the sand pretty decent, but... Obviously a 1 mana discard spell would make it better. like hammer oh well I want to draw a land not really well I guess I would want to draw a shot or a fetch but I didn't have the opportunity to do so Caravex torch maybe maybe that's what I'm thinking about yeah I think I'm probably going to get destroyed this game because my hand's really bad. Mostly think this matchup revolves around drawing discard though. Um I don't really have any discard. Like I don't I don't actually love drawing the lock versus these decks. I don't think it really does anything. Hmm. I have a lot of amulets. I'm just hoping my lord and savior, Ragavan, can save me. Alright, Ragman, you have a lot of work to do. Alright, that's bad for me. That can go get the uh, bounce land if they're missing that part. I think I have to leave up Terminate, unfortunately. So they can just get Amulet. And just do a lot of degen shit, unfortunately. I guess they don't even need a... Oh, Grazer? Okay. I'm just gonna auto yield to those. Let's see what they do. Alright. 
If I were them, I would have gotten Simic Growth Chamber and Toyer West and just made another Titan, then tightened up that one for Stronghold uh, Garrison. Because this literally gets folded uh, by Terminate. I, th I think basically I would have just made a bunch of titans instead of doing what they did. Like if you just make two tit like two titans, then get the stronghold garrison, it's a lot better for you to do. And plays around terminate, which is like not admittedly not the most common card, but you might as well play around it for free, right? Um. I really wish I had drawn a land, honestly, but, you know, it's fine. Alright, I'll make them discard a card. I think I'm probably still unfavored if they draw another Titan. Right, there's Toyer West. So, they really could have made that play last turn that I was describing. They just chose not to, weirdly enough. Fetched down to 12, play Shadow Kroxa. Oh, wait, I can't even play Kroxa. So, actually, what I'm going to do is do this. Bad. Well, it's game one. No one plays EE in game one of this deck anyway, so kind of a rel. Um, no, I should do this first because I might hit Delirium for my Unholy Heat to force through the damage through the blocker. Wait, no, I can't. Can I? I guess I'll just attack first and see what they do.
Well, I can't get Delirium anyways, but I, I guess I should actually do this first. Because what if I find Fatal Push? Oh no, I won't have mana. Okay. Alright, I think it's still correct to cast it first, but... Alright, they're at 8. So, they can block at most this. And then they're dead. Okay, that was a weird one. I think I should have lost if they had just played around Terminate. But they didn't play around it, so I won. Lucky me, I suppose. Oh, uh, what else didn't I like? Oh, I don't really like drawing the lock versus them. I don't think it does anything. It's good for summoners packed exactly and bad versus everything else. Spell Pierce is okay, but not great as well. I'll cut one Kroxa, even though Kroxa was very good that game. They're playing around Drown. But how does their play play around Drown on that turn cycle, Fubaj? Oh, I see. If I Drown the Pact? Hmm. I guess that's reasonable. I see. I mean, it worked out really, really badly for them, but I guess from a numbers perspective, I guess it is more likely that I have Drown than Terminate. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Um, Reluctant keep is how I'd put this. That card is bad right now, so I'm not going to draw it. Possible that I should have just held it for turn two, but kind of just want to get things going. Maybe that's crazy. Actually, it's probably wrong to just do that. Hmm. Okay, I have regrets. I think I'm going to get destroyed this game, but we'll see what happens this turn cycle. They have Azusa, it's real bad for me, but if they don't, I might, might be able to escape it.
I'm skeptical I even care about that. <laughs> it's kind of funny to say, I suppose, but... Riot. That's a good one to know about. All right. Kind of think like they just don't have time to use all those clues in most of these games. That's why I think Tracker hasn't aged particularly well. If you think you have a lot of time to use off the clues, then it's a good card, but I don't think that's going to be the case personally. What's up, Spider Space? Hope you're having a good one. Where you walk there are shredders. There's probably a reason for that if I had to guess. Well, if you make Excel jokes or spreadsheet jokes, you have to sub to the channel. I don't make the rules here. Actually, I do make the rules here, I guess. So. Yo, Paraseline, welcome back. It's been a while. Oh shit, that's so many Jarvis claps. So this is their hand. One, two, three, four. Is there a way to cut them off? Is there a way to cut them off tight with this Alpine Moon? I don't think there is, right? This makes blue green, this helps for green because of two dryads. I just hope that they fuck it up somehow, I guess. Like, it's kind of hard to fuck up, but... I guess. 
I don't really have a better play, right? Does it? Oh, wait, it does. Never mind, you're right. You're right. Oh my god, that's genius. Okay. Spider Space, I need to pay you more. Really need to pay Spider Space more. Holy shit, how the fuck did I miss that? <laughs> Alright. Y'all, I need to double Spider Space's pay in the chat. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I missed it. Oh, that's just so good. I was too busy thinking about something that was completely irrelevant. Holy shit. Let's get some Jarvis claps in the chat for that Spider Space kill. Alpine the garrison when they have a pack flowing. That's just that's just too good. Uh alright, I'll open a chest for Paraceline. Maybe maybe there'll be something nice inside. I'm under arrest? Wow, I don't I don't want to be under arrest by two whoopers. Those are whoopers, right? They look like whoopers. What the fuck is this card? I've never seen this card before. Three red, white, black, five five vigilance menace, legendary creature, human knight. Whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, you draw a life wizard card. Equipment you control have equipped knight zero. Fuck is going on. It's a brawl card? Is it worth anything? Oh, it's like Corvold? Well, Corvold was a really fucked up magic card. I'm not sure this one is. Apparently it's like two tickets. Huh, interesting. Alright, new prediction up for the third match. We are currently 2-0-4-0 with Threader Shadow. Alright, time to pop open the good stuff. Not beer, but ginger beer. Which is actually soda in the United States, so it's kind of funny that it's called ginger beer. But, it's delicious. <laughs> Sounds like I'm drinking beer. Yeah, Fever Tree ginger beer is great. It was actually on sale at our local Costco last Friday. So, like, for some reason it was just like 15% off. So how could you say no, right? 24 pack? They only have 12 packs over here. How do you have a 24 pack? Yeah, the new granular bets are nice. This, yeah, this is really fucking good, so. They were last playing Red Green Ponza, alright? Time to double my pay by paying you? Time <laughs> to double my pay by paying Yo, Spider Space, thanks. Appreciate it, of course. If y'all want to check out a cool streamer, check out Spider Space. Mostly plays modern, I believe. Oh, that's a Fury. Okay. is you. Don't need that. So now I'll have Delirium. Bone Crusher. So their top card's Fury, that I know about. So what's the best card to take here? Um. Is they're gonna 
half fury plus these. So that means they're going to cast... They'll have Bone Crusher plus Bolt. Maybe I should just take the Bolt. Yeah, I think I should just take the Bolt. Now, I'm not going to play the Ragavan out into Fury because that just leads to problems. If you play, if you play the Ragavan out, they just Fury your entire board and then it's just kind of disastrous. I was I was at Pittsburgh. It's just it's impossible to find anyone at well, at those events. Um, we didn't do great. Like we were we were four three, four four, on day one, four four I think. And then I only played a legacy, like three rounder. And I did a draft on day two while I watched Koval, like, make top eight pretty easily with Blue Red Delver as well. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really, like, play that many big events besides the Team Sealed one. No, but, like, events are cool. I assume you were playing, um, Gabriel. You missed Endless Bobbles? That that makes the card a lot worse. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I think I just have to kill that. And just surveil. Death Shadow is like my best card in this matchup, I'm pretty sure. Alright, don't need another one of those. So they have a Verdant in hand, which means they can go... What if I just dash? Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna dash Inquisition, their Bone Crusher, and hope that their Cascade sucks. And I'm just gonna play a Tap Land because I think my life total will matter. Right, that's another Blood Braid. They have mismatching Blood Braids as well, huh? Um, is that good? So, if I leave that on top, what's going to happen is I'm going to have to deal with two Blood Braids and a Fury, probably. I guess maybe they'll leave their Blood Braid on D. So actually, I will leave it on top. Yes. I'm just gonna be a tap land now. I was just thinking it all the way through, Urza. No harm in thinking it all the way through. Like, this game's not gonna last that long, one over the other. Chat. Chat. Fucking Blood Moon. Chat, fuck a Blood Moon. Alright, they have one unknown card in hand. I have one Swamp, but I didn't really feel like I could uh, realistically fetch it this game. Well, this is what, where we're at. I 
I can't really afford to play around anything. If they have Stomp or Bolt, so be it. Fuck. <sighs> I think I'm actually just going to not play my Shadow this turn and let them hit me once. Because of the sizing issue. Oh, wait, this is a matchup where Crooks is really bad because it's just like impossible to cast. Oh, you're gonna chill? You're gonna chill, opponent? No chills. I think it's better for me that they attack, actually, but... Gigantha's kind of a good out to Blood Moon, actually. I, I forgot about that, but... Alright, uh, 4-4 four, four Shadow is, like, the perfect size. I mean, obviously bigger is better, but 4-4 four, four is kind of the perfect number. Alright, All right, that's less than ideal. I think now I'm dead. I don't think there's like really a series of draws that gets me out of this now. It kinda sucked. Alright chat. Who here loves Blood Moon? Shop, were you the one who had Blood Moon for the Tron Mirror in your sideboard? I'm I'm asking for a friend. Yes, has been called. Alright, Drown the Lock sucks, because it's uncastable. Croaks is also real bad. Okay. This is okay. It's not Carbon Miner. Why do so many people love fucking Blood Moon? Holy shit. You don't love fucking Blood Moon? 71%? Is it no Dwarven Miner? I have a Dwarven Blast Miner. Reluctant keep. I did ask, yeah, it's true. I think I need to reprogram myself to hold the bobbles a little more often. Like here I'm not even gonna play it, I think. No Goblin Settlers? Jesus. Uh, so Kenzin. Alright, I haven't found Shredder yet, so now I'm gonna go looking. Let's 
same fire. That's nice versus Blood Moon and bad versus virtually everything else, so I think I'm just gonna ship it. Gonna get basic now. Which is a little bit cowardly, but I want to be able to play the game. Oh! Fuck! Uh, I didn't want to click so fast, but actually that might have been the correct choice. If two bolts though. Ah, uh, fuck. That was... that was bad. You do have two bolts. There's two bolts, not just one. It's really, really, really bad. A bolt, bolt, stomp. It's me to... I think I just kind of have to do this. It's kind of scary, obviously, because... Alright, good. They're killing my creatures. That's fine. I have so many fucking creatures. You can kill them. Um, Bush looks bad, and my shadows look really good. Of course, they can fury everything, that's fine. Like, they can go fury pitch fury, or fury pitch something, fury pitch something, and it's fine. They still have one bolt in hand. I just accidentally, uh. accidentally clicked it. Yeah, 442 is absolutely fine. basic mount uh the stomping ground interesting yeah okay. stomp plus bolt's fine okay. fury pitch fury so they have one unknown card is all fine. It's time to put Gigantha into hand. I'm just gonna fetch a tapped land now because I don't want to take too much damage just in case something weird happens. Okay. I think that land out's weird. If I draw chaining iterations, is better to have the lands out. On their hand, if I draw Shredder, it might be better to sandbag one land. So maybe I should have. I don't know. Again, this sure isn't Lurus. Yeah, Slurus would have been way better there. But, you know, you do what you can.
Just gonna get in my damage and not risk like a bolt or whatever blocking, like block plus bolt. Obviously the the Kiki Jiki could get out of hand, but sort of banking on the fact that it's not going to. It's a good sign for me. Wait, I said I didn't spell pierce? Oh, to tag a turn two blood moon, that's why. Alright, that's not that bad. Oh, I mean, it's kind of bad, actually. It's bad here. My best draw is another iteration. I've only used one so far, so it's not that unreasonable to ask for. Okay. That's one of their better draws. Brand six. They're debating if they should, all right, they did cast it, which means I'll get a loot. Do I care about running six? Like, so I can basically choose to kill Reflection of Kiki Jiki or Spell Pierce Ryan right 6. I don't think Ryan 6 matters. I want to do this now before the Bloodbraid gets into play. Because then if they just like pass with Kiki, Jiki, Bloodbraid, they can make another 3-2. Obviously it won't Cascade, but better to just not give them the option of just sitting around to do that. Because also I think my Gigantha attacking matters, you know. Alright, my best draw is iteration. Can I get an iteration chat? What's up, Turtle Power MTG? We're down a game versus Ponza, but we're we're two and zero in this league. Just this match has been tougher. The new Dragon Turtle. I don't think it's great, honestly. I think people are just freaking out because like. There's a huge difference between that and Murktide Regent. Okay, if they're doming with that, I'm going to not let them put me to four, I guess. I, uh, something Bane? Alright, they drew a Utopia Spall, great. I guess Gigantha mattered this game a lot, you know? Yeah, five, blue, blue, seven, seven, ward four. Sailor's Bane, that's it, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's good, but also I don't really think it's worth thinking that much about it. That's a good draw.
It's impossible for them to have a good card in hand, because they would basically just cast all of the good cards they have. I mean, like, their their deck is a sorcery speed deck. Loris doesn't attack for five, that is true. I think Loris would have been a lot easier to win with this game. Do they actually have mana dwarfs? Yeah, they have Ragavan and Ignoble Hierarch. Alright, submit. Alright, Ginger Beer finished. Going to game three versus Ponza. This doesn't get us out from under a Blood Moon. I mean, it could have. Yo, Anzid, thanks for the raid. How did you finish with Shredders? We're also playing Shredder here. I'm playing Shredder Shadow with Kroxa. Although Kroxa is bad versus Blood Moon, so it's not in my deck anymore. Currently 2040 with this deck. Although, we're in game 3 of round 3 now, so. Hi, Jin Jubei. Well, of course, Murktide Region is a better card than that card. Oh, this hand sucks. I'm just gonna shift Death Shadow. I think all my other cards are pretty important. The real danger is Renin Six. It's possible I should have just shipped Ragavan, oddly enough. Now that I think about it. Saving my bobble for Shredder. Chalice of the Void and Renin Six. I really loathe these decks. I'm taking Chalice because I literally cannot play the game of Chalices in play. So. Also, I need to find an answer for Ren 6 ASAP, so I'm playing the bubble out to just like cycle it. I'm gonna let that crack happen. Let's see what their top card is. It's Boris. Fine. The extra lands don't really matter very much because Ren just gives you all the lands. Alright, so now I just need... Should I just feed my Ragavan to Ren? Seems kind of bad to do that, actually. They have Catacombs in hand. I already... Oh, I see. No, you're right. Okay. I guess I'll just say go. You're right. I think I'm going to get Swamp here to play around Blood Moon as well. That's kind of nice all around. And yeah, they're pretty incentivized to just play Fable. Fable plus Ren is kind of disgusting, actually. I hadn't even thought about that, but... Ah, fuck me. Fuck. It's much worse for me. Alright. 
I'm kind of dead now, I think. I don't have, like, any abrades or anything in my deck. My best draw is, like, Death Shadow, I think. Well, the thing is, if they just never crew it, it's a huge issue, right? Which is the actual problem. Like my best my best card to find is actually Death Shadow. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I mean, yes, it dies to Fury, but it forces them to pay two cards for it. So I'm okay with that. I can't believe that her survived that turn instead of, like, the obvious Fable play happening. It was so bad for me, honestly. They drew a bolt?! Come on! What? Fuck. So I have Fury and Bloodbraid off from here, it's so insane. I go to seven, that's kind of unsafe. Maybe I should have actually kept the push in case of a crude. Actually I should have kept push instead of heat. That was a huge stick thing. Play a tap land now. I feel like this matchup is actually good, but obviously you can lose. I think Death Shadow is your most important card, though.
Yep. This feels bad. Feels like I'm dead. To be fair, Fatal Push is not good for this card either, so doesn't matter. Yeah, Hearst is kind of good even without crew, but obviously crew matters, you know. Kind of a frustrating game. Basically, nothing, nothing went the way I wanted it to in that game. But that's okay, sometimes it happens. Alright, thanks everyone from uh, Onrock Stream for being here. If you're new to the stream, Hit that follow button that's free to do and help support the stream. If you really want to support the stream, check for those Twitch Prime subs and uh, consider using them here. I'm going to open a chest real quick for Spider Space. Let's see what we got for the old Spider Space. The five play points is not bad, but reach through reach of branches is garbage. Alright, um, also going to run a quick ad. I'll be right back in a few minutes and get more water. So thanks for being here. Be right back.
All right, chat, I'm back. There's a prediction up for the fourth match. Uh, kind of a frustrating one, but... Yes, I will open a treasure chest if you sub. Alternatively, if you don't want me to open any treasure chest, I'll also do that. Occasionally, when people redeem open all, the, like the channel points reward, I have opened like a hundred plus chests. But just for a single sub, I'm not going to. Yo, Matt. All right, we'll open a chest for Matt because he has done the thing. Let's get some Jarvis claps in chat for Matt. Rat catcher from Dissension. If you really like rats, you can catch them. I wonder if Vox of Agonis is worth it. Probably not. Wait, it is. What the hell? Why is it four tickets? All right, we take that. Why is Ox four tickets? I have no idea. Alright, pretty decent hand. Second Steam Vents is not ideal, but probably not gonna mulligan this hand. I feel like this is a Tron opponent. Definitely Tron. Yo, Ray, crazy guy. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Open a chest for you real quick. I was right, it was Tron. All right, we got Ether Swan Canist, Spiteful Sliver, and five play points. Uh, that doesn't have a Shredder, unfortunately, but, you know, Canis is... Has been a good card over the years. All right, they went to three cards. If I lose to this, I'll fucking... I'll probably mauled if I lose to this, honestly, but, you know. Right. Always be Ragavanning versus this start. Alright, chat. Fuck. There are two thirds of the way there! I think the best way to go about it is to try to kill them very quickly. Right. I hit the Oblivion Stone at least. They only, they only have one card in hand, so like Thoughtseize is not even that good, I think. We'll just do this instead. That's probably good enough. The top card. Karn? That's fine. We're fine with Karns. Okay, they don't have Tron. I'm probably fine. I don't think cards matter. I think I'm gonna have infinite cards, so I should just burn cards for damage. Which sounds funny to say, but I think that's just how it is.
Okay, well, let's use you. I probably should have fetched first, but I don't want to draw another shadow anyways. going to play around them top decking out of this. There's not a real reason to. Like, if you just take the Karn, then it's like, actually, then they have to find Tron and a payoff. Yeah, look, well, like, sort of played around it. Of course, this is kind of a scary situation for me still. Well, I mean, I've just played a million matches versus deck. You just have to play carefully, you know. There's not really much to it. All right, looking for Teamer, Battle Rage, or Alpine Moon. Not that. The problem with playing the shadow is it doesn't even kill that fast. Okay, well, fuck me. They're just gonna draw Ugin off the top, obviously I'm gonna lose. No reason to show them the Alpine Moon. What in my face seems really bad for them to do. Don't I just kill their fucking Ugin? They do that? Like, that seems like a really terrible play for them to make. Alright, well this hand's broken. This hand's literally, like, almost the nuts. And they're going to five. I don't mind, like, I think Pawns is kind of not a great matchup, depending on how you draw. I think Tron is actually a decent matchup. But, of course, there's always volatility involved. I mean, sometimes it's just also, like, modern, you know? So it's actually really important you alpine a thing that's not in play, because if you alpine one that is in play, what can happen is they just use that and like nature's claim off of that. So it doesn't really work out well for you to do that a lot of the time. I should attack first in case I hit Karn, a great creator. Cool mog, that's not good. I guess I'll thoughts use them now, though.
I think I could lose to Worm Coil, hypothetically. It's pretty hard to lose to Karn from this board state. Throwing more Ragavans doesn't really help the cause, though. I think I just want to close the door ASAP, so putting Gigantan in might make sense, especially if I draw land next turn. No, uh, it loses the Urza's type. So, the way, when it says if you control an Urza's mine, Urza's power plant, it means the type line right here, and Alpine Moon disables that. Like, the Urza's is no longer, like, this is a weird way of framing it. All right, my opponent was tired of me explaining why Alpine Moon screws them, I guess. How do you want to bet 2 1 in that match, huh? Alright. Fifth match of this league. I'll probably play a few more matches after this, but not like an entire league, probably. I also think I want to make a few changes. So, uh, fifth match, bet on it if you want to. go fifth match of this league probably we'll make a few changes and play like two more matches or so oh god grixis shadow finishes its matches pretty quickly a lot of the time Yo, Boris boss, what's up? I have been hydrating a lot. That's why I use the restroom so often during the stream, actually. It's a hack for tournaments, too, because if you just drink a ton of water, uh, you don't, A, you don't get dehydrated, and B, you can reset by going to the restroom, washing your hands, and, like, clearing your mind that way. There's just, like, a life hack. See what my opponents help to do. Here's to be Merc Tide. I think their most important card is Expressive Iteration, so I'll take it. This is a pretty classic matchup, and I think what actually happens is your creatures are generally bigger than theirs, with the exception of um with the exception of literally Murktide, and that's a reason to actually play Terminate in your deck. So. Well, like, Counterspell is not even that good versus you, honestly. Like, you can just easily slip past it. A lot of your spells are super cheap. Weird stuff in Pioneer. What sort of weird stuff? Is A Boyd uh, up to no good? Is it Aboid or is it just you? 
Oh, that was a fantastic draw, actually. Gonna get the Swamp to play around the main deck Blood Moon. It's kind of cowardly, but... Blue-red decks? The, I think the blue-red decks are really good, and I think the combo decks are fine. I think, like, the Is It Prowess deck is pretty good, and I think Is It Phoenix with Shredder is also pretty good, obviously. Stock version of Lotus Field. Um, I've been kind of impressed with Lotus Field when I watch good players play it, but I think a lot of people who play that deck are really, really, really not good at playing it, which is kind of funny. Well, it's not just you, Jinjubei. There's just a lot of people who don't mow it. Like, it's actually a Tron deck that plays combo. All right. Uh, I think I'm fine trading this. I have to. I have to make this trade because it's like because I have a swamp. So I wanted to play around Blood Moon. It's actually impossible to get past that. I think. I guess actually, what I could have done was just. Put Gigantha in my hand, but I think I also kind of want to force him to use that there. Well, I had a feeling because, like, how many people would be named Jinjube? Okay, that's a good draw, actually. Now I can clear the way for the iteration now if they have another counter spell. Interesting. Alright, I'm taking that one. So now I get a random mill. It's fine. So I fetch Shock 8, that's a 5-5, five five, and it's pretty hard for me. Like, obviously Unholy Heat kills it, but I think it kind of just makes sense to do this. And now I think we're pretty squarely in the driver's seat. I mean, they have a consider and an Ottawara, and I have, like, two relatively big creatures. They, like, kind of need to get two Unholy Heats to get going. Which is definitely possible. Still can go get Gigantha, although it's, like, not very appealing. No longer interested in Ragavan because of the Shredder blanking it.
think I'll just send and play DRC. I mean, they still have Ottawa in their hand. But playing this, like, playing both out just gives them a Kanai for no reason. And I'll put Gigantha into my hand, like... I think they're basically forced to call all bluffs by this point anyway, so there's no real reason to bluff. Like, bluffing is not good here. Actually, a more accurate way of putting it is... I think my opponent's so far behind that they can't really respect any buffs. So, like, what's the point? If you try to buff someone who always have to call, then it doesn't work. Oh, me. It's kind of terrifying. Leaving out mana instead of getting Gigantha, yes. Also, having another card extra to discard to Shredder might matter. Yo, what's up, Boland? Hope you've been having a good one. Very Islet. I could still be dead to two bolts. What the fuck? I mean, I could have avoided that, I guess, but it it is a real cost to try to avoid that shit. Um, what didn't I like before? Uh... To answer someone, I don't like Dren- I didn't ever really like Dren in the lock as much as other people. Like, I was the one usually playing three instead of everyone else's four. So it kind of makes sense I would cut another one, right? I don't remember what I was siding out in this matchup before. Maybe I wasn't siding in uh, Spell Pierce before, but I think it, in retrospect, that's probably a mistake. Does anyone remember what people used to side out in this matchup? I literally cannot remember anymore for some reason. It's been way too long, I guess. Oh, I should be bringing in hers too. Yeah, I need to cut four cards. Probably just side out iterations. Well, over voltage, I'm not going to take that seriously. So. I think it might literally just be discard for some reason. I don't even remember why I think that. That's kind of crazy as well. But, I'll try it. No, I think Kroxa is actually good versus them. A Kroxa would have broken that game open so easily. Yes. My hand could be anything. It could even be a boat. I'm gonna save, like... 
Well, I guess I'll see what my top card is. Well, they first off, they don't always have hearse, and second off, it is actually one of their better cards. It's one of the better cards if they try to choke you with just a string of counter spells. Ideal though. Actually, this is why you can't side out Thoughtseize. Now I remember. Why are they bobbling me? I guess they knew that was going to happen, huh? So the reason I'm doing this is I could draw like Spell Pierce or Dispute or something like that. The fetch Shock puts me to 11. That's kind of good. So I'm gonna bobble myself to see what my top card is. If it's good. Um is that good enough? It might be actually. I think what I'm gonna do is just play one shadow out and draw the dispute and dispute basically like any blue card here. Well, sometimes there are reasons to do it. With the Unholy Heat, that actually makes sense. Because there was only three types in the yard. With the Bolt, it didn't really make sense, right? Remember when I kept the dispute? Looking pretty good now, right? Foreshadow plus Terminate plus Gigantha versus the world. They Blood Moon me here, it kind of is annoying, but not the end of the world. Sure. That's just like an overcosted Terminate. Again, this is no Loris. Loris would be like insane here. Instead, all we got are Giganthas. Maybe you're right, I should have waited. 
But I just thought they were out of removal, Louie. They like basically are to use so much removal, so. Good luck. So, if I pass, they could hypothetically play Murktide. But they've already used one Murktide. Am I supposed to play around a second Murktide or just see if I can get them to attack? don't think it's worth playing around Murktide. I have the Terminate lined up anyways, so it seems kind of okay to just pass. Because if you don't have the Murktide, I just get to pick that off for free, and it's really nice. Makes me think their creature is going to die. They have two artifacts, two instants, so it's it's not that easy for them to get to Lyrium. Don't need another Shredder, I think. What match is this? Oh, it is the fifth match. I couldn't remember for a second. them keep delirium they're already t down to unholy heats it's like i think it's kind of crazy to play around um i'm playing i'm basically trying to shrink merc tides and so they don't have a double merc tide turn but maybe i shouldn't even be doing that maybe it's just better to leave this untapped actually Well, so if you pass, they can still play Murktide, and what if they just have Counterspell, right? Like... Uh, that kills that and that. It's fine. I'm still rumbling for eight. It's not actually zero cost to just say go. Well, upkeeping's the same as main phase, right? What does upkeeping it actually do? It just lets them have their lands untapped, right? So they could just, like, consider into an Oi Heat, like, I don't know. 
I, I don't think that actually makes sense. Okay, let me ask you something. If they have heat, do I get to hit them with the shredder? I have to go back and check. Maybe you're right. I thought they had enough. Hmm. Okay. Conclusion is citing out that card's wrong. Maybe on the draw I'll cut Crooks's, actually. But I do actually like Crooks over some. Next level is to not have Spell Pierce in and just take your L's to Blood Moon, which actually I think might be okay. It's also kind of harder to leave up mana when you're on the draw anyways. Guide for the only did. I mean, I have a hearse to cover these matchups. I don't think Soul Guide is like that good versus like a blue red Murktide deck. No, Relic would be better, but Relic also hits your own graveyard, so that doesn't really work. Either way, enjoy the discussion. Yo, thanks for the sub. All right, let's let's uh, take a gander hand. If you spell pierce it, that's fine. It's fine. Makes me think they don't have a second land. Because if they have a second land, they don't really make this play. Alright. If we can take advantage. gonna play it out because I actually have like an iteration to cast next turn. Of course if they draw a red removal spell it kind of sucks but
don't want to let them use Counterspell on Channel Warp, but I will just... I'm going to just try to overload them on one turn. It's actually pretty good to draw, I think. Excellent. Excellent. Sure. Actually, I should have dashed first, but it's mostly the same. If I hit a 2-drop, it's worse, but I, I should have dashed first. They kind of have to play into... They have to play to the board now because I have so much stuff. I mean, they know about this and this, so it's like kind of maniacal to not play into the board here. Okay. I do not care about that. You probably should have just played a Murktide instead. Also, they can't even cast their Merc Tides now. Like, what the hell was this plan? Like, the Merc Tides are cut off. Now I think about it more and more, this is really, really bad. Like, you have to literally hit Snow Island to compete in the game. Whereas, if you just played Merc Tide, at least you're not conceding on board. The more and more I think about it, I don't understand why you would cast the Blood Moon there. Alright, they hit a Snow Island, but they're still dying because they can only cast, like, one thing per turn. I have a shit ton of removal in my hand, so... True Blood Moon and got excited? If I were my opponent, I would never cast Blood Moon in that scenario, and I would just hope something else works out better. Okay. Like, you're just in the same spot, except now you have to play Murktide. And you can't, you can only cast like one spell per turn because Blood Moon also hurts you. So I, I don't think it made sense to do what they did. Uh, no. Well, yeah, kind of, actually. I don't think Blood Moon was terribly good when Is It Phoenix was popular. Alright, nice. 4-1. Um, 
Payout prediction. Was that match 2 0? I can't even remember. No, it's 2 1. But, yeah, if my opponent didn't cast Blood Moon that game, I think I actually would have been slightly worse off, but it kind of did matter. Anyways, um. Yeah, deck's pretty good. I'm gonna change a few things and try a few matches, but deck felt pretty strong, and I don't know, kinda just like having more threats. 